quick check one. This is for your 1.1 and 1.2 corrections. y equals x squared plus 6x plus 2. This is in standard form. To find the axis of symmetry, we use x equals negative b divided by 2a. So we get negative 6 divided by 2 times 1. x equals negative 3. We go over to the graph and put our axis of symmetry is at x equals negative 3, a vertical line, and we label the vertical line x equals negative 3. We don't label it and say axis, axis of symmetry. It is a vertical line. The label would be x equals negative 3. Next, we're looking for the vertex. We know the vertex lands right on the axis of symmetry, so we're using x equals negative 3 and substituting it into the function 9 minus 18 plus 2. The vertex, therefore, when x is negative 3, we get that y is negative 7. Because negative 7 is not on my graph, I am going to label it on the y-axis at negative 7. And then I plot my vertex, and I label the vertex as a coordinate an x, y coordinate. When x is negative 3, we found that y was 7. Next, we're looking for the y-intercept. When x is 0, we can very easily see that y is going to be 2. The y-intercept is at 0, 2. And now I can use the axis of symmetry to find another point on the left-hand side. If I am 3 units on the right, then I will also be three units on the left of the axis of symmetry. And I draw my parabola. Next, we look to see if it's a maximum or a minimum. It is the lowest point that it can go. It's a minimum at negative 3, negative 7. If I took my pencil and ran it along the x-axis, I would see that the domain of the function is going from negative infinity to positive infinity. Using interval notation, we see that the range is starting at negative 7. That would be a square bracket for negative 7 because it includes it, and it is going to positive infinity, a rounded bracket. Next, we see the function y equals negative x plus 5 squared plus 4. This would be in vertex form. The formula for vertex form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k where hk is the vertex, that's positive h and positive k. Here we see that the vertex is going to be at negative 5, positive 4. Remember, it's the opposite of what you're seeing in the parentheses. If I am in vertex form, then that would be the first thing that I find, the vertex. I plot the vertex at negative 5, positive 4. I know that the AOS, the axis of symmetry, is going to go right through that vertex. So I already know that the axis of symmetry is going to be the vertical line x equals negative 5. Make sure that I label my axis of symmetry and vertex. And now looking for the y-intercept. Next would be the y-intercept. Let x equal 0. 
we start with inside the parentheses. And then we would do exponents next. We still have to follow the order of operations with PEMDAS. And now negative 25 plus 4 equals negative 21. Now negative 21 is not on my graph and it's too far away. The best thing that you could do to find a second point is to pick an x value that is closer to the axis of symmetry. If the axis of symmetry is at negative 5, then I'm going to choose x is negative 4. We substitute that into the function. We start with parentheses first, and we get 1 squared. Then we do exponents next. 1 squared is 1. And then finally we see negative 1 plus 4 is 3. When x is negative 4, we found that y was 3. Using the axis of symmetry, we look for another point on the left-hand side. And now we can graph our parabola. We can see here that it has a highest point. Therefore, we have a maximum value of negative 5, 4. The domain is going from negative infinity to positive infinity because those arrows would be going out, out, out to infinity. And then the range this time is going from negative infinity to positive 4. 4 is included, so I use a square bracket. Everything is labeled on the graph. I'm ready to move on to the third and final form. We have y equals x plus 6 times x plus 2. This is intercept form. If this is intercept form, then I should start by looking for x-intercepts. And those x-intercepts are going to be at x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 2. I plot those x-intercepts on my graph. The general equation for intercept form is y equals a times x minus p times x minus q. The axis of symmetry is halfway between the x-intercepts. To find the AOS, we would do P plus Q divided by 2. Here we see that P is negative 6 and Q is negative 2. Negative 6 plus negative 2 divided by 2 equals negative 4. The axis of symmetry is X equals negative 4. I graph the vertical line at X equals negative 4 making sure to label my axis of symmetry, x equals negative 4. Next, we're looking for the vertex. We know the vertex is going to be on the axis of symmetry at negative 4. Substituting negative 4 into the function, we get negative 4 plus 6 times negative 4 plus 2. That's going to be 2 times negative 2. We see that our vertex is at when x is negative 4, we get that y is negative 4 as well. There is my point, negative 4, 4 for the vertex, and I can clearly see the outline of the parabola. Making sure that I have everything labeled, my vertex and my axis of symmetry. Even though I don't need the y-intercept for graphing, Questions like this will always ask you where it would be crossing. So when I do x is 0, I substitute in 0 plus 6 times 0 plus 2, and we get that when x is 0, y is 12. We have a lowest point, and so that makes it a minimum at negative 4, 4. Again, the domain is going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity, and the range starts at negative 4 and goes to positive infinity. Again, just checking the graph to make sure I've labeled everything correctly. This next part is from 1.2. There were some notes that were missing, and so I wanted to do two examples so that you could go back and correct 17 through 21. 
we need to take these and put them in standard form. The first one is an intercept form and we need to change it to standard form. These are all being multiplied and we are going to start with 4 being multiplied to x, which is 4x, and then 4 times positive 1 is positive 4. Again, these are all being multiplied. I need to put parentheses around that and make sure I still multiply to the second parenthesis. We will start with the 4x and multiply twice. 4x times x is 4x squared. 4x times negative 6 is negative 24x. And now we're ready to move on to the 4. We have positive 4 times x, which is 4x. Positive 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. Now we see that we have some like terms that we can combine together negative 24x and positive 4x. We have 4x squared minus 20x minus 24. Final answer. When we're simplifying in algebra, we still need to remember the order of operations, PEMDAS. I look at the parentheses. Is there anything that I can do inside the parentheses? No, I can't do x minus 1. The next thing I need to look at is exponents. If I asked you what 5 squared means, what does it mean? It means 5 times 5. Well, that would be true in this problem as well. We have an exponent. So we have 12, and then we have two parentheses that are being multiplied to each other. x minus 1 times x minus 1. We've expanded it out, and now we're back to what we were doing on the first problem. 12 times x is 12x, 12 times negative 1 is negative 12, and that's still being multiplied to x minus 1. And then we have a plus 4 on the end. We are going to use the distributive property 4 times. 12x times x is 12x squared. 12x times negative 1 is negative 12x. Now we multiply negative 12 times x is negative 12x, and negative 12 times negative 1 is positive 12. We have some like terms that can be combined, negative 12x and negative 12x, and we also have 12 and 4 that can be combined. They are like terms. We have 12x squared minus 24x plus 16. Final answer, 